Well, hello, and it's wonderful to be here today marking Earth Day. My name is Laura Clark. I'm the CEO of Client Earth, and it's a real pleasure to be here with Olafur. Olafur, thank you so much for joining us and joining me today with this discussion. Thank you so much, Laura. I'm an artist. For the ones who are celebrating Earth Day and watching this, I wish you congratulations with a good Earth Day. I work as an artist here and there. I'm fortunate to know Client Earth a little bit, so I'm very excited about being here today. Thank you. And that's a wonderful understatement to say you work with art here and there, because of course you've got this extraordinary um, catalog of work behind you and incredibly exciting exhibitions ongoing right now and and client earth is a is a huge fan of your work and and your ability you know through the art to change the conversation around climate and how and how people need to change how they interact with the planet um and you know and the power of your work in in highlighting the issues at stake but also enabling us to remain positive um mm. so i wonder if you can talk a little bit about what drives that work how you focus your work and 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 what it is that how it is that you're using art yeah. to create that greater understanding thanks, of our Laura. changing world thanks i think um you know, as, as an artist, it's, it's not so unlike with many other things. It's, it's often about being inspired or, you know, or to have the courage to have imagination or just to dare to imagine something, you know, like fantasy and so on. And, and, and maybe, maybe it's a good thing. I was actually quite inspired by, by Earth clients because I, when I first heard of them, I was like, wait, I have to hear that again. That, so this is, like, this is like if a tree is unhappy, and it's angry at its local, you know, community, and it's gonna sue them. Well, you call, right? When the air of the city of London sued the city of London, when a river sues the polluters. And I just I just think as a little framing for this for the people who doesn't know. So Earth clients are the sort of legislative team who represents more than humans or non-humans, or you know, and I think that's also a bit about imagination. How is the air of London going to sue the city of London? And, mm. and, and can you tell? So, so for me to be inspired, and because I think I think this is inspiring. Oh, somebody actually listens to a tree, and somebody says, "Hey, who do you think you are, human? All that exceptionalism. If you think about it, the tree." is not doing so bad after all. But what does you do? What does the tree do? Who's best? What, who does more for the environment? For instance? Evidently, we know without trees, we humans would, uh, without plants, we would die. Right? We would disappear. Without humans, the tree would be fine. Uh, you know, And in that sense, I as an artist, I'm very focused on what is the narratives through which we conduct our life. Well, well how do we see things? And the need to re-see or unsee and then re-see or unlearn and relearn how to how to question your own exceptionalism and, and and maybe maybe also see that well maybe the human exceptionalism the modern idea of humans was actually not so exceptional after all mm -hmm. we need to and i'm not saying we need to you know we just need to reconsider reorganize re-see and this is now where art and culture comes in. And, and, and so this conversation here, which I'm an artist, and you work in legislation. And, 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 and um, I'm a part of civic society. So mm. culture is, is a driver, it's a critical driver for, for healthy society, I would say. Because I, so this is why I work in this section of society, in the civic society. And art always lived there. I mean, sometimes in the past it was more occupied. The employer was the church, largely, or, or, or stuff like that. But now, art is a valve through which society checks its own pressure. And I see you the same way, and I find that very mm -hmm. right. I mean, it's because you don't work for you don't work for the private sector. You don't work. For, if anything, you work against the private sector, right? You mm -hmm. don't work for the public sector either. You work for the greater common good, if if one can simplify it. Yeah. Like that, right? Yeah. So it's very interesting, and that's why I'm keeping an eye on you because sometimes I'm, you know, how do you get an idea as an idea? How do you actually, how do you have faith in tomorrow? 
How do you gonna believe that tomorrow is better than yesterday? Because looking at the news, it's not so um, it's not so easy, you know. To mm. and I, I'm not just talking about hope because, as as Father Tutu says, you also be a prisoner of hope. Oh, I'm hopeful. I'm not gonna do anything. He said, I just hope. Right? So 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 after what's after hope? Well, it's action. And what do you do? And that which I celebrate, you are you are actually you are kind of activist, like lawyers activists. Right? Mm. Mm. Very interesting, and and that gives me. That means somebody is doing something, and that's inspiring. And, yeah. and you know, and 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 I and so I drive myself in art. You you I source myself from looking after what you're doing. Not that I always get it, but but the confidence that somebody is bloody doing something. Is I think a huge source of inspiration for me then to go out and do what I do. That's wonderful. Thank you, and and we so so appreciate your support for us because yes, as you say, the the Earth is our clients. We are client Earth, and we are doing all we can for advocate for the planet, for nature, for biodiversity, for tackling climate change, um, and really finding different ways to give a voice. To the planet and not just let the 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 corporate incentive to maximize profits be the driver of behavior um and i but i do think that you know we try to use the law to give a voice to nature and the environment and then you as you know in a really important other part of that movement are using art and really to highlight you know that question of you know we really highlight quite how interconnected we are with the planet, because, as you say, there's been a bit of a sense that humans can interact and live separately from the planet. We can't survive without the planet, without nature. And I think that's what you do is you bring you bring together quite how of at one we are with nature and how we need to do more to protect it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, evidently, we hear about there's a few people who's going to live on Mars, apparently. That's kind of nice. So we got rid of them. There's so many of us anyway. Uh, the, the, um, the, I think the, this notion of somehow having the courage to look down underneath your feet and notice and, and actually pay attention to the fact the world or the earth underneath your feet or the, the ground under your feet is collapsing. And it's not just mm. collapsing, it is actually collapsing, right? It's mm. like, as you speak, you don't have to read a lot of science nowadays. And so, 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 so that creates, of course, like a degree of instability. That's a very uncomfortable, oh, oh, bloody hell, uh, this is unstable. And uh, so instead of looking at the horizon towards utopia, into this is a great idea, we are going to move there, everyone walks to the sun sunset, I think looking down, and be humble to the ground on which you stand. And now that have that discussion, uh, mm -hmm. what you what, the work you do in philosophy or in theory, there is a there is a there is a sort of a not so young anymore sort of a discourse, which I think is called oriented of uh, or what is it triple O's oriented ontology object oriented ontology bloody hell, <laughs> and then. And uh, and it's like uh, you know, Timothy de Morton, Han Han Donna Haraway, fantastic, fantastic, Graham Harman. So these are people who are actually say saying, okay, there's humans, and everything mm -hmm. has, has intentionality and agency. And you know, a tree is not a, a noun; it's a verb. It is treeing. It's treeing its way through life. It has a life. Mm -hmm. It's and and a rock and everything in a way, right? So 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 for an artist or for culture, this idea that well, you know, for the time being, this table is tabling its way through. It's on a journey. It's gonna. It's a wood. It's made of wood. It's gonna compose at some point if it's made relatively using some sanity. It's gonna decompose. It's gonna become earth. It's gonna maybe be a tree again. So see now, this kind of thinking is is around, and people, mm. I think, are paying attention to it. You know, art is about celebrating a meeting up of journeys. Mm -hmm. I don't want to yeah. be so abstract. You you go to a museum, maybe, or, or an exhibition. What you experience is something traveling there. A painting, a hundred-year-old painting, has been traveling a hundred years through world wars and all kinds of stuff and to meet up with you. And you go, hi, painting. You mm -hmm. go, hi, tree. 
And instead of saying, hmm, what can I use you for? What, how much money can I make on you? Uh, what can I uh, uh, extract from you? What can I extract? I need something extractable from this museum. Otherwise, I'm not going to go. You can also say, hi, Tree. What is your name? Where are you mm -hmm. from? And what can I learn from you? Yeah, so you tell absolutely. Me. And this is, uh, so, so, so now, sometimes that offer, that, that's an offering, right? You go to a museum, and it can be very touching because mm -hmm. it very much becomes about reconsidering how to be seen, met, and heard how to actually sit in front of another person and listen, rather than proclaiming and talking about, uh, you know, uh, achievements and uh, intentions, but how to actually look at another person in the eyes and say, I can hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. This is so humanizing. That's... And that you can do with a tree or with an artwork or with a... Uh, yes. This, this is where we are, I think. It's re reconceptualizing value, I suppose, the value that we place on nature and how we interact with nature. And tell me, um, um, uh, you, you've done, done an extraordinary exhibition called Glaciers Melt, um, which where you documented 20 years apart um, glaciers and the changes that had happened to them in those in that time in terms of melting. And, and I think you say in a very powerful way, each glacier that melts is a testament to our inaction. And of course, we need to see glaciers that we save by our action. Tell, tell me more about that. Yeah, I, I, my, my father lived in Iceland on the south coast. Lots of, lots of glaciers. I walked and hiked in my teenage years across glaciers, you know, to largely unaware of, uh, I, was, I was occupied by the Cold War, right? Think, and, uh, you know, the Berlin Wall came down and stuff like this. And then I became, I worked as an artist. I heard about the Kyoto Protocol. I was like, wow, what's that? And because Iceland is an Arctic, largely Arctic landscape, the plants, everything, you know, the moss, if, if you drive a car, car across it, it takes 30 years to somehow get back on track. So the fertility and sensitivity was something that I knew from growing up. So seeing the glaciers, it's, it's such a majestic experience. It's really quite, quite, um, it's just very, very special. And they're so brutal out of scale with human, right? You're walking on them, you go like, oh, I hope I don't, I hope I don't fall into a hole or anything. So then I couldn't really photograph them walking. So I said, okay, I'm going to get a tiny little plane and just fly around and shoot them. And I did that rather informally. I said, oh, they were so beautiful. And, and there was lastly a celebration. Wow, nature. So it was funny at that time, a uh, now friend and intern of my studio was born, Kino, who was born when I was flying around, right, actually, 20 years later, we celebrated his birthday as he was sitting in the back of the plane, it was a three-seater, holding the old photos. I could see on him how much time has passed. I could see it in the glaciers too, because we could sometimes we couldn't find the bloody glacier. He was like, no, that's not it. Okay, fly another round to the pilot. It's like, I won as a one propeller and the pilot, of course, like, aren't we there now? And so we found the same photos because back, I didn't have a GPS or anything. So I hung them and you could see, as we know from, from these photos, uh, also I could see how many artists, uh, how many years I worked as an artist, which is so scary. But And and uh, I was doing a show at the, at the Tate in London. I just done ice watch, the melting ice blocks in front of the museum. So the kind of idea of bringing that into into the tape was, I think, relevant. And to see 20 years, in, and, and the difference is alarming. Let me add to that, only two years before that, now this is the, the photos I did in 2019, two years before that, I was at a funeral in Iceland. It was really touching, uh, uh, and I'll keep it short because the funeral was for a glacier. It was declared dead. The glacier mm -hmm. is gone. It doesn't... There's a geological term, so let's keep it there. So it, can, it cannot even sue anyone, sadly. I mean, had it known about you, it might have, it could have used your help. See, now that glacier was called Oak. Okay, Oak. We went to a funeral. The amazing Mary Robinson from Ireland was there. Kumi Naidu from, from Greenpeace, former and, and Amnesty was there. There's lots of people come to the funeral of a glacier. And it was a Andres Knight, the, the Icelandic author who co-organized it with two uh, fantastic scientists from Rice University. So I, I just have the plaquette. 
from the funeral, which sits alone on a mountain where there is no glacier anymore, on a stone. And I have a picture of it. I'll just read you what it says on the plaquette. A letter to the future. Oak is the first Icelandic glacier to lose its status as a glacier. In the next 200 years, all our glaciers are expected to follow the same path. This monument is to acknowledge that we know what is happening and we need and we know what needs to be done and only you knows if we did it august 2019 that's so powerful yeah that's so powerful thank you and it's and it's devastating as well but i suppose as we as we wrap up this conversation what i would say is is how that shouldn't lead to defeatism or us giving up action and giving up hope. And there are lots of ways when people are inspired by the what your work, the work of art, there are different things that people can do. They can support organizations like us. They can also take action as individuals, writing to their politicians, um, looking at where their money is and their pension funds in their banks, joining Absolutely. campaigns because it's not too late uh, to make the change. And I think that your work is so powerful in, in making the case for that in changing how we interact uh, with the earth. And, and so I just, you know, if we can end on, end on that point of my gosh, this is stark. We know what we need to do. We know how urgent it is, uh, but together we can make the change. Yeah, absolutely. I am, I, I am not, a pessimist. I am afraid of leaning back. It turns out that everything one does can be seen through the lens of where can I get a little bit better? And that is very positive. I think emotionalization of deep, you know, deeper emotionalization is actually not be numb, right? Not be deaf, not be insincere, or not be, um, you know, to actually let yourself be touched and touch somebody, whether however way, right? The, the, this, this notion of, well, I can actually feel what the, what was going on. I can feel it. And I'm not really sure I can say it. I don't know how, it, I don't know how to articulate it. You are in legislation. You, you speak that language. I mean, I speak that language. But we, it's, not, it's a crisis of crisis. And we, mm. that's why I like this chat here, because it's, Normally, we are compartmentalized into different parts of the world. Yeah, that's not how it is here. We are, yeah, you know, we're in the same, we're in the same, we're in the same chat, the same boat, so to speak. That I think uh, is interesting because we are collaborating across, and and uh, and I went uninspired. I look up what you're doing. I don't understand it because that's not my language, but it's inspiring, and that gives me a, a drive. Um, and I donate, right? I gave, I support you. I like support you every time I can. So this is just fun to talk about. Oh yeah, my friends, they were representing a, a, you know, a tree. Yeah, yeah, no, they won. Yeah, yeah, man, my God, the tree is great. The tree is doing fine. A friend of mine from Toronto, Natasha Myers, an uh, 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 artist, a da dancer, anthropologist, a fantastic visionary person. Uh, um, she, she said to me, oh, I just did therapy with a tree. I said, oh my God, are you okay? What's that? How did the tree help you? And she said, no, 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 no. Um, uh, the tree was receiving my therapy. I was talking to it. Because the three right. other trees, its siblings, had just been cut down because of the road construction. And the tree's alone. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, that's really touching. I, and you did it? Yeah, yeah, she's done it for a couple of weeks now. And, it's, and it, you know, and she's a specialist in First Nation uh, narratives from, from Canada. The, the knowledge in indigenous groups the respect and the balancing out of nature. See, now, this might for some people be as abstract as how can you, as a lawyer, represent a tree? It's only a question of imagination. No, of course, as mm -hmm. I said before, the tree is treeing. It's doing it. There are no nouns if we look close enough. And uh, no, it's, so, so, so thank you for having me here with you, Lord. And thank you. It's great to talk to planet Earth. It's wonderful to talk to you. And it's all, of course, about the art of the possible, isn't it? And how we all work together, not just on Earth Day, but, but throughout to make the change we need to see. So thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.